Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Midday Magazine for this July 29th, 2024. Hope you're having a good one out there. You have your host, James, and we are joined right now by our great friend, Laura Huber, 4-H Program Educator with UW Extension Wood County. Uh, Laura, it's always great to see you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me again. This is always just a treat to be able to come in and talk with you. It uh, warms our heart to hear that. We love talking to our friends at Extension. Uh, some of our favorite interviews are with you guys every week, and we appreciate that what you guys do, and specifically what you do, Laura, for our youth, for the 4-H. You are literally investing in our future, the time and the energy that you and your volunteers and all the people at the staff uh, spend with these kids and what you do there. You guys have uh, something fun that you, we got nothing but fun things that you guys do. <laughs> but every once in a while, there's something that really stands out. And you're going to be at the Central Wisconsin State Fair this year. Absolutely. So the fair is actually one of the highlights for youth um, in 4-H and FFA and other youth organizations every year. Because, you know, while 4-H is fun, it really is a lot of work too. And the fair gives young people an opportunity to show off all of their hard work, but then also get some really important feedback from judges. Um, you know, what are they doing really well? What are they really shining at? What could they make improvements on? Um, and I think when you talk about the educational value of things, getting that honest feedback is really critical. Parents, I think we're really good at either, you know, oh my gosh, that's just great, or sometimes being overly critical of the work that we do, or that our children do, not understanding, mm -hmm. you know, the development um, of, you know, that very first beginner yeah. to being the expert. Mm -hmm. We might have... Um, disproportionate expectations for our children based on age or experience where judges who come year after year are really much better able to gauge, oh, this is your second year doing this? Well, mm -hmm. you're doing great for a second year experience, right? Not expecting just because somebody is 16 years old that they should be a professional if maybe it's their first year doing right. that thing. It's a really good note to mention. Um, we, we, you know, to every parent, the most beautiful kid in the world is your kid, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's great. That's how we are as parents, and it's something we love. But it, it, kids pick up on that pretty quick in life, a lot earlier than I think we realize. Yeah. I know I did, and um, that. So my mom, my dad, my grandparents, their feedback was great and, and helpful, and it certainly we encouraged that out of people. Build your kids up, yeah. but it, when it is, you know kind of strangers or, or people in these situations, they're glued to that mm -hmm. and they really take that in. So it's a great point to make that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And one thing that I did think about going into the conversation is growing up uh, around here uh, or spending a lot of my youth out here and stuff and, and going to school out here specifically. One of the things that I remember so often is, well, I got into 4-H because I saw this at the fair mm -hmm. or uh, I, I experienced this in the fair and it got me wanted to get into the ag industry. Yeah. Um, we we know, and, and any Wisconsinite knows that has been to any of these fairs around here, know what I'm talking about. The the spark that can happen in a child's mind just from seeing other kids at the fair, seeing what they're doing. Oh, I want to do what they're doing. I, I mean, that's a kid 101. <laughs> uh, it, 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 that is a great uh, great opportunity for this as well, and a great an important part of this, where it's it's uh, not only getting the chance to see what these kids do and them getting to show that off, which is so vital to this uh, event, mm -hmm. but it's also the idea that we might spark new interest in not only 4-H, but in the ag industry uh, through them just seeing these kids and you at this event. Yeah, that's actually my my own family's story, if, if I could. You know, my husband and I would go to the fair every year for the food. One night, yes. one night a year, we would go to the fair. And so when we started our family, it was no different. Um and when my oldest, who's now 21, um, was just about to enter 4K, we walked through, it's called the Junior Fair Building. That's where a lot of the youth work is on display. Um, and he saw Legos with ribbons on them. Mm. And he looked up at me and he said, Mom, why don't I get ribbons for my Legos? Mm -hmm. um, well, heck. <laughs> yeah. mm. um, so that's when I started to just explore 4-H um, because that would be the avenue in to being able to show at the fair. Youth who show at the fair have to be a member of a youth organization. So it could be Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or 4-H or FFA, but that's your, that's your ticket in. Mm. Um, so then I started volunteering, and the next thing I know, I've got a brand new career um, doing this because I wasn't in 4-H. Um, and so I really encourage families to take their kids to the fair and do more than just the rides mm -hmm. and the food. Um, 
because there might be something there that catches your child eyes or child's eye that you didn't realize before. Um, And 4-H can be the way for you to make that pathway, even if you're not an expert in whatever the field is, right? Um, My daughter is a dancer. Uh, I am not. I never have been, whatever. (laughs) So I rely on somebody who knows about dance to help my daughter with that. Same with llamas. My daughter is showing llamas. I don't know the first thing about those animals. Oh, wow. But she's able to do that for through 4-H with people who know and care that can teach her. But then we go to the fair and she shows off the llamas and she gets great feedback from a judge who has lots of experience in llamas. So um, it, it is a really fun time and there's so much more to the fair than mm-hmm. just the fun. You know, we've uh, as as the speaking of this, we're twenty some days out of the fair. Uh, it, the uh, fair will be going on August twentieth through the twenty fifth, and you can find out more at centralwisconsinstatefair dot com. Centralwisconsinstatefair dot com, uh, where, where you guys are going to be, or do you know where the location of where you guys will be set up? Yep, absolutely. So we have the Junior Fair office, which is in it's a building called the Junior Fair building. And by the way, the benefit of coming to visit us is we are the only air conditioning building oh, on the fairgrounds. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a great selling point. Maybe we buried the lead. We should have led with that, baby. You bet. So uh, on the really hot days, come in and visit, cool off, and check out some really amazing work. Um, That building, um, along with the hockey building, will both have youth displays in. But then every animal barn will have youth and their animal projects in there. So no matter where you go, you will encounter youth work at the Central Wisconsin State Fair. And not only will you encounter the work, but you'll encounter the kids, especially in those barns. And I would encourage you to just ask a few questions, and you will be so impressed with the knowledge um, that these young people have. So, What kind of uh, exhibits will the kids be having? Well, um, one of the cool things about 4-H is kids get to choose their own path. You know, when when the kids are in public school, there are specific curriculum things that they have to do. That's not the way it is in 4-H. So in the building where my office will be, that junior fair building, we'll have everything that um, kindergartners, first, second um, graders make, and that runs the gamut. Mm-hmm. But then we'll also have electricity. We'll have woodworking. We'll have arts and crafts. We'll have photography. We'll have sewing and crochet and knitting. Um, We'll have all of their foods projects in that building. Um, But if you're more interested in things like the plants that they grow, the vegetables that they grow, um, natural resources displays, horse displays, like all of that sorts of stuff, that's going to be in the hockey building. Um, And then, like I said, the different barns will have different animals and lots of 4-H kids. Yeah, um, when it comes to uh, taking in these two, uh, it it's so important to be able to not only ask those questions, but to kind of um, take these things in and make sure the kids are ta- seeing you take these things in. Yeah. Uh, even if it's not necessarily a, a question that you truly have, you just want to ask a question, mm-hmm. I think that goes a long way for these kids as well. It gives them uh, opportunities. Well, we focus uh, at 4-H on the ag industry, certainly. One of the things that I've enjoyed talking with you, Laura, is all the different ways that 4-H has impacted other aspects of kids. And yeah. one of the things we always come back to when we're talking about kids is building them up, building their confidence, mm-hmm. and certainly building their people people skills and their communication skills. Here's another great opportunity for them to work on that and build that as you ask them questions that they don't know. That yeah. they they don't know that you're going to ask this particular question when you do. So it's really enlightening enlightening for them and a great opportunity to build on those people skills, be able to build on um, uh, you know explaining and, and communicating and talking uh, to others and talking to in the public and that. There's very there's no kid who's going to grow up and not have to do that at some point in their career, if not multiple times in their career. These are reps. And every time you give them a rep, they're going to get better at it. Mm -hmm. So we talk about hard skills and we talk about soft skills, right? And um, yes, it's really important for us to prove to our employer that we have the computer skills or we have, you know, whatever that that skill might be. But those soft skills, those life skills, the communication piece, um, so critically important. And um, recently, here's just, again, 
we recently had a trip that we took with middle schoolers. It was called Discover Wisconsin. So mm. fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And that's an age group that really gets a bad rap, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh my gosh, who would want to teach middle schoolers? They're mm. just hormonal and you know off the walls and all of those sorts of things. But when you get a chance to have a conversation one-on-one with somebody, and I don't care if they're a kindergartner who, you know, they're adorable, mm-hmm. or if they're a high schooler who's ready to start talking about career plans or college plans or whatever, Whatever. let's not forsake those middle schoolers because they are amazing. And so if you take the time to just, maybe it's asking a question and yeah, maybe you already know, or maybe you've observed something really cool about the display that they have up above the animals, or you see how hard they're working to keep their area clean or to take care of their animals or whatever, to just take a moment and give the compliment or ask the question to notice them is so critically important because that's going to give them um, the boost to have more of a conversation. That age group isn't gonna go and hide behind mom like a kindergartner might, Mm -hmm. right? They wanna know that you're there, that you care, that you see them, and that uh, their hard work is recognized. They're so accustomed to being criticized. Mm -hmm. Um, So getting positive attention is so important to them, and you then will be helping them build the communication life skills. Yeah because they're going to give you more of the time of the day than if you just like, oh my gosh, those kids, they're always on their phone or whatever mm-hmm. else it mm-hmm. might be. That investment I was talking about that Laura and, and the, the crew at 4-H make on our youth is something that you can be a part of as well. By taking in these exhibits, by asking these questions, by giving these kids these positive feedback, mm-hmm. you are impacting our youth, you are investing in our youth. Yeah. It, it's as simple as that. It's a great way to be able to do that. We're speaking with Laura Huber, 4-H program educator with UW-Madison Extension Wood County. And Laura or is there anything uh, different that the, the kids will be exhibiting or doing this year than in years past? Is there anything new that you guys will be doing over there? Well, um, we have a number of different things going on. So mm. we talked about how we'll have displays in the Junior Fair building and in the hockey and in all of the barns. But this year we're also a part of it's the Wonders of Wisconsin mm. um, program. And mm. that's going to be in the Lang building, which is right next to the Junior Fair building. Um, But each day, Melina Caratini, our AmeriCorps member, is going to have some hands-on activities for Mm. kids. Sometimes she might be in the Junior Fair building. Sometimes she might be um, next door. And part, honestly, is going to depend on the weather because Mm. if it's crazy hot, we're going to want her in the Junior Fair air conditioning. Um, But then (laughs) It really worked out. That really worked (laughs) out easy. (laughs) Um, Especially on Saturday, from 10 until 2, we've got a special program going on called the Progressive Egg Safety Zone. So this is a hands-on... Um, just interactive thing. We'll have little passports for kids to be able to go from station to station. Um, We're partnering with a couple of different groups to make this possible. So we're going to have a, like, and this sounds so silly, I know, but a first aid station there for kids Mm -hmm. to learn first aid. Um, Everybody knows Band-Aids from the time they're little on, right? A Mm Band-Aid makes it better. But until you've seen a kindergartner or, a, you know, just a young kid trying to take off a Band-Aid and put it on themselves, you don't realize that they haven't learned yeah. the basics because <clears throat> those young kids are always going to a grown-up for help in those things. We want to give them the hands-on experience of what do you do? Why does it matter if you wash off that little excuse me, cut or scrape. Yeah. Um, how do you get that Band-Aid on? So we'll have a number of different things. The first aid is just the one I'm looking forward to because I love watching little kids in Band-Aids. I'm with you a thousand percent. I just experienced this. My uh, my nephew, Henry, is in town and uh, Henry's about uh, eight, yeah. eight, nine, somewhere around there. And um, he, there's little things that we've been experiencing already together. Um, for one of them was the Band-Aid thing. Uh, he, he couldn't open it. Yeah. And he didn't know, he didn't know the adhesive part and some of that. He was just trying to put it on and he couldn't figure out why I wouldn't go on. I was letting him and then I, I helped him. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a nice note there too, uh, letting kids try and mm-hmm. then just showing them, hey, this is not, you know, doing it for them, some right. of that and everything. Another one that I was shocked by, Henry has talked on the phone before, but it's always been his mom either holding the phone or speaker phone. So when we his mom called on the landline and my mom my mom went to hand him the phone, he didn't know what to do. Sure. He didn't know where to talk to her or anything. Yeah. And it was, it was, he was having fun with it. I was having fun. It was hilarious. Yeah. It, it's a great note. I also think, and I, I've uh, mentioned many times on the uh, over the years on the air, 
I would love to see our education system be able to have the funding and be able to incorporate every kid. You can't graduate until you know how to do CPR. Sure. You got to know how to do the Heimlich maneuver. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I could you imagine generation after generation, every kid knowing that? Yeah. Uh, where's the downside in that? It's a very similar thing of what you guys are doing with this exhibit. Um, these are things. These are life lessons that we learn. And some of it, if we leave it up to the ether to find out, you just don't know how a kid is going to learn. Right. Here you are being able to take the initiative of it and hey this is how it's done yep and one of the pieces that goes with it is you know what we have faith in you yeah. right i'm oh, going to take yes. the time to invest in you because yes. i know that you can do these things and sometimes um grown-ups take for granted just how capable young people are but you know what my job is to make sure that you see that I know you, young person, are capable of a lot of things. So I'm not going to try and do everything for you. Let's learn together, right? Yeah. And it's it's just I, I, it's so much fun for me. Let's face it. Mm. I am in this work because I love doing it. <laughs> yeah. um, and the response I get from kids is really cool. Um, let me just step back again to that Discover Wisconsin mm -hmm. trip. We stayed at um, UW-Superior's dorms where they still have physical metal oh, wow, keys really? wow. for the dorm rooms mm. and the kids have to use the key on the outside to lock the door when they leave mm. they didn't know how oh, fifth yeah. through eighth graders didn't know how to use yeah. a key because so many of their own homes right now have keypads to enter the garage or even just to enter the front door mm. so um just taking the time and being respectful to show them how to do it yeah. and being patient to let them fiddle with that key even where it got a little bit sticky mm -hmm. wow <laughs> right yeah. so i think um as we get older we don't realize how much the world is changing and um the patience is necessary for our young kids to want to learn and to try the things if we're impatient with them they're just going to hand it over and let somebody else do it so another soft skill i mean is it perseverance? Is it willingness to learn? Like, I'm not exactly sure what we call that, um, but we can grow that in, a, in our children if we hand them to tool, the tools to learn and offer them the patience so that they can mess up and mm. try again or keep trying until they get it. That, that word patience is really important with this subject, too, and, and always with kids, always with children, it's important. But I, I think in, in more, in maybe not patience that we always understand it to be with certain things. And, and sometimes that is that, uh, mm -hmm. having the patience of letting them figure it out themselves or at least being there to help them figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes a lot further than we realize. And while we get as we get older, we forget more and more of these things, chances are this is how we learned as well. You bet. Uh, another thing the 4-H does that I really admire that I, I think is on display at this exhibit and at this event at the fair, uh, and again, we're talking with Laura about the uh, uh, Central Wisconsin State Fair, is the opportunity for them to not only um, interact with others and have some of the, that, that going on, but um, that... The, the simple chance that they have to run into somebody else that may say something or do something that we don't pick up on. Yeah. Um, the, the opportunity to try and fail. Uh, there, there's a lot of times in life with that where uh, it, there, there's, there's some real, uh, there's a risk of this happening or this happening or something like that. Here's a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Here's an opportunity for them to do these things. And not just the Central Wisconsin State Fair, but 4-H in general yeah. is a plan, a chance for them to learn, grow, make mistakes and, and with a net, if you will. Um, yeah. and, and that's something that I, I, I don't think of very often. And I'm so thankful to the 4-H for and to have an, uh, an opportunity for them to share and show these things at like the Central Wisconsin State Fair. Yeah. And one of the things I'd like to highlight about that is the net isn't always us professionals. Mm. It's not always the volunteers. Oftentimes that net is created by their peers, mm -hmm. the other kids who are there and showing. Um, the coolest part of, uh, for me, on the show days where the kids are showing animals is the level of support that the older youth will give to the younger youth. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if they're in the same family or in the same club or if they're just in the same barn, yeah. right? It's so cool to see um, that, that, you know what? Yes, I want to succeed in this, and I am your competitor, but I want you to succeed too. So when I see you struggling or I see the tears that flow after um, the market sale, if you're not familiar with market sale, youth are able to raise um, beef, sheep, and swine. Um, they show them on the first day of the fair, and then on Wednesday night, there's a sale. So those mm. um, there are actually bidders out there in the audience that 
um, purchase those animals, and then the animal goes to market. Mm. So those kids who've spent so long, months, for beef, it's even over a year, mm. um, raising those animals, working with those animals, they literally have to say goodbye yeah. and um, know that they are going to go mm -hmm. to market. Um, there's a lot of tears there. Yeah. And so seeing the older uh, youth who've been through this before, go ahead and put an arm around somebody who's experiencing it for mm. the first time or sharing their own personal experiences. Mm. It goes so much further than just having an adult always come in to the rescue. Oh, you'll be yeah. fine. Wow, no. It is such a growth experience for these mm. these young people. I just I can't say enough about the fair. Yeah. So yeah, that hit me. That yeah. I, that the I, just the image of that hit yeah. me. That's beautiful. And that, that is, I'm so glad we got that in, Laura. And yeah. I'm so glad we were able to take some time and focus on this, and not only celebrate the Central Wisconsin State uh, Wisconsin Central Wisconsin State Fair, but to celebrate 4-H and your guys' place in this. Uh, again, find them at the find our 4-H at the Central Wisconsin State Fair going on August 20th through the 25th. Enjoy yourselves at the fair and find out more at centralwisconsinfair.com. And Laura, if people follow up questions for what we've talked about today, how can they reach you? Yeah, so you can always reach me by phone or email at the Extension Office. My phone number is 715-421-8439. Or my email is laura.huber at wisc Dot edu. And hey, come and see me at the fair. I will be at the Junior Fair building every single day of the fair. Um, I try to leave before six o'clock each night, but hey, sometimes I'm there later. So, <laughs> Knowing you, yeah, I can yeah. see that. I can see that. <laughs> Laura, we appreciate you. Appreciate your team over there. Always encourage uh, parents and kids to get involved with 4-H. And you could be involved with 4-H too. They're always looking for volunteers and other helpers. So reach out to Laura and the gang and find out more. You can find out more at 4-H.extension.wisc.edu. That's 4 h extension.wisc.edu. Thank you again for the time, Laura. Thanks so much, James. Well, a more Midday Magazine for you coming up on 97.5 FM, 1320 AM WFHR. We are locally grown radio.